Hello young writers, my name is Maria and I am a teaching artist with 826 Chicago and today we're going to do a creative writing workshop. I think that writing is really powerful because you get to tell your own story about yourself and your life in your own words. Each of us as people has gifts and experiences and observations that make ourselves and our points of view unique. What do you see with your eyes, smell with your nose, hear with your ears, feel with your body? In writing, what you think and feel is important. Writing, like drawing or really any kind of art, is a lot about the act of observation. What details are we paying attention to in the spaces around us and the people that we know and ourselves? What do the details that each of us notice say about ourselves? And how do they make us feel? Finally, writing can be fun. And I think it's especially fun when we're writing about things that we like or that we care about or that mean something to us. And writing doesn't always involve sitting still behind a desk, so we're going to do some exploring today. In today's workshop, we are going to spend some time looking around the place that you're in, wherever that is. We are going to collect as many details as we can, and we are going to use those details to make a kind of poem. For this workshop, I recommend having two materials, a piece of paper, any size, any shape, any color, um, and one pencil. If for whatever reason you don't have those on you right now, you can still participate. Something that is really cool about 826 is that a lot of the young people who do our workshops then let us publish their writing in books. Um, so I'm going to read a couple different things today from books that include a 26 student writing. I'm going to get us started in our activity by reading you a poem that is by a student named Damani Martin. This poem is called Out My Window and Damani wrote it in grade 5. Out my window I see cars zip zap zooming by quick as lightning on a thundery night. People casually walking down the street faded yellow parking lines, and a parked yellow gold RV. Out my window I see four colossal bulky trees that have ugly, fallen, brown leaves that go crunch beneath your feet. Out my window I see a huge white square box that's been almost glued to the ground for weeks, and the worker men coming in and out of it to upgrade our apartments so they can be beautiful like a blue, calm stream. On my window, I see sparkling, snow-covered trees in winter with slippery ice and slushy brown snow. Pollen everywhere, on the ground, in the spring, and people with allergies blowing their noses. In summer, I'm in the picture, playing outside on a sticky, sunny day running around with my friends, or trying to hide so I won't be found. I resent it. In fall, the thin branches sway every which way, and leaves make their swirly journey to the ground where they lay. Out my window, the things I see, it's all my perspective. Strangers might see it different, or even my neighbors too. Out my window, it's all my opinion, my point of view, Everyone sees it different, even you. So we just heard the poem, but what does it look like to see the poem? How are the details laid out on the page? Are there any details that you especially liked or that especially surprised you, um, that you especially remember? Do you think you'd see the same things if you looked out your window? Do you think you'd see different things than Damani did? And why is that? Before we move on to our activity, I want to read the ending one more time. I really love the ending of this poem. Out my window, the things I see, it's all my perspective. Strangers might see it different, or even my neighbors too. Out my window, it's all my opinion, my point of view. Everyone sees it different, even you. I love this ending because it really points out how every single person is going to see and notice and care about different things than each other. Um, and even as the writer is telling us exactly what they care most about, they're also acknowledging to the rest of us that we might care about different things or we might notice different things. So let's go do that. We could do that by going to a window, or we can do that by sort of making windows with our own hands. 
And when you do that, you can kind of see how you've basically created a window frame. And you can look at different things in the space around you in a more focused way. It can really help you focus your attention. Today we're going to make a poem out of details that we notice in the space around us, wherever that might be. And we're going to find those details by looking really, really closely. To help us do that, I want you to take your piece of paper and your pencil, and you're just going to poke a hole. So I'm going to put my pencil sort of near the middle, and now I have a hole. So I actually got this activity, poke a hole, um, from some friends of mine who work at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago as part of their learning team. And what I like about poke a hole is it's a great way to focus even more on the things around us. The way to use this tool really effectively is not to hold the hole really far away from your eye and also not to hold it so up close that you can't see that frame anymore. If you remember the frame that we made with our hands when we did this, that's essentially the kind of tool that this is. So I'm going to hold it about here and I'm going to use it to help me focus on specific details that I see around my apartment. I said see, I have been talking a lot about sort of using this as a tool to focus our sight. But we could also think about how we focus our hearing, um, how we pay attention to different materials. We could also think about what it just feels like to be in our bodies inside whatever space that we're in. So I've been saying see, but we can really be using all of our senses as we do this activity. What we're going to do in a minute is some investigating around whatever space that we're in. But first, just let me give you a couple quick instructions and ideas. One goal might be to pay more attention to things that you already know are important to you. For me, my books are really important. They're also the main thing that I collect. I could write a wall of books, which it is. But something that actually stands out to me when I look at my books through this hole is that they actually look like stripes to me. That isn't something I've ever really thought about before when looking at my books. So I'm going to write striped wall. I could also write a wall striped with books or something else. There are two guinea pigs that live in my apartment. They are also very important to me. And something that I notice when I look at the guinea pigs through this hole is that they have pretty amazing haircuts. They're sort of punk, sort of carefree. So I'm going to write spiky like a stylish porcupine. But I also just want to see what I notice, maybe for the first time, when looking at the inside of my apartment through this tiny circular window. Because what I'm hoping is that I'll notice things that maybe I haven't noticed before. I see gray fuzzballs. I can make comparisons between what I see and other things that I know. So maybe instead of calling my wall blue, I might say bright blue, like the inside of the pool at the park. I also see that I have these tall shelves, and I think the thing about them that's important is not just that they're tall, but that they are taller than me. And I'm going to keep going until there is something written on most parts of my paper. If I look out my front window, I see the middle school across the street, but there's no kids there right now. So I might write a school without children or a lonely school. Wallpaper in need of new glue. A jungle of cords. I have a pillow that looks like a party. Write down just a few words at a time. Try to slow down and be intentional about the words that you are using. We are not writing everything that we see. We are making selections. You do not need to write complete sentences. In fact, it's better if you don't. Just write a few words, maybe just one significant detail. Don't stress out about spelling. You can write anywhere that you want on the paper. You don't need to write on the lines or have all of your letters be the same size or anything. So now it's time for you to go investigate. Go ahead and pause the video and come back whenever you're ready. Now that we've taken some time moving around wherever we are, investigating details, let's take a break and listen to one more poem uh, this is from another 826 Chicago book called A Flower Blooming in the Dark. The name of the poem I'm going to read is The Forgotten Side, 
and it's by Luis C., who wrote this in eighth grade. Colors. Green, blue, red, purple, orange, yellow, gray, black, white. Colors splattered across the city, spray painted all over the outside walls of everything. The outside wall of schools, stores, restaurants, demolition sites, hollow things now bursting with life. Flyboy, South Ashland Avenue, Joseva Ortiz de Dominguez School, Cloudgate, Flamingo, Crown Fountain, architectural masterpieces. Kanye West, Fall Out Boy, Chance the Rapper, all hailing from Chicago. Prepossessing, enchanting, opulent, inspiring, street to street, museum to museum, Chicago. An artist's haven. Music flying in the air, the pride of each community, the shining gem, Chicago. What do you notice about how the poem is laid out on a page? One thing that I notice is it looks sort of like a couple of diamonds. It also looks kind of like a list and you can kind of hear that it's a little bit of a list too. So it's noticing details around the author, but it's noticing them in a slightly different way than the other poem that I read earlier. The other poem I read earlier, if you remember, also was kind of laid out on the left side of the page, and this is centered on the page. So there's no right or wrong way to put your words on a page. So this is what I ended up with. I laid out the words on my page in a lot of different ways. Some of the writing is bigger than others. It's oriented in different directions. Sometimes I used capital letters. I add a little doodle in here. Uh, I have a frowny face. And if I wanted to be done, I could say, look at this. I made a poem today. You might call it a collage poem because it's sort of like a collage, you know? It's a mix of a lot of different images and details and colors and materials that I noticed. You could call it a list poem. It is a list. It's just sort of spread out around a page, maybe not the way that we're used to seeing a list look. You might even call it a concrete poem because maybe there's something about the way that the words are laid out on the page that tells us something about what it's about or that are supposed to make us think of certain kinds of images, maybe images that this author sees around Chicago. So you can choose to look at your poem, however it is right now, and say, I'm done. I like it how it is. There's also a couple other options I can share with you if you want to take these details and transform them into something else. If you want, you could choose to keep working on your poem, reorganizing, reshaping it, etc. We don't have to keep every idea we came up with, which seem most important to you. You might trace over some of the words with marker to make them pop off the page or to visually connect ideas to each other. You might cut out these words and rearrange them on a different piece of paper, the same way you might make a collage out of pictures, but with words. You might line up almost like a list, like in Louise's poem or this detail is really important, so I'm gonna repeat it. You might create a whole story using the details you've noticed. You might think of this as a draft, something you're gonna keep working on, but it isn't ready yet. You can also take your poem and the hole in the middle of it to notice even more details around you. So whenever you're done, I want to encourage you to just kind of take a moment to reflect and think, what are some of the things that I noticed? What do they mean to me? What's something they leave you thinking about? One of the most exciting and sometimes scary parts of being a writer or an artist is that you don't always know what you're gonna find when you go investigating. So I hope that you're feeling excited by what you found today when you went investigating. I think it takes a lot of courage to be an artist. It takes a lot of courage to be willing to pay attention to the things that are happening around you, to be willing to notice those things and even though we just did this activity ourselves inside whatever spaces that we're in, we can take a lot of the skills that we're practicing here and put them into our writing, but also put them into the way that we act and sort of witness the world around us. Thank you so much for trying something new with me today. I really enjoyed it and I hope you did too.